Good morning. Hello from New York City. Before I get into what I want to talk about today, I want to talk about a few things from the last episode on journaling. The bookstore in Rockefeller Center is McNally Jackson, not Rand McNally. I think Rand McNally makes printers or something. I got various questions about how I keep track of things, and I want to address that quickly because it is something that a lot of people are interested in doing or think about doing and never quite get around to. I did my lifeline in Excel. I put the month and the year, and where I didn't have a specific month, I would put winter, spring, summer, or fall. So that was one question I got. Another thing people were asking me about with the Moleskin Weekly Planner is if I write in it daily or after the fact or whatever. That is not my agenda where I have my calendared events. I usually do it the next day. I take note of what I did, anything that will remind me of the day or the week. And then on the right-hand side of the page where there are the lined pages, I'll capture a few things. It could be about world events or a friend I'm concerned about, what I'm reading or listening to. I want to be able to remember more or less what was going on in my life at a certain time many years later. It's like a snapshot. The point I was trying to make is that any aid or method that you have of observing your time, your energy, your feelings is good. I think people think of journaling as writing, and it is, but it needn't be necessarily thought of just that. It's about anything you can do to hone your awareness and observation of your life, your energy, whatever it is you're paying attention to. Today, I want to talk about something my friend Eric and I used to say to each other. We've always talked a lot about our businesses. We were both building our businesses at the same time. And we talk about things from client development, operations, our employees, that kind of thing. And two of the things we say a lot are using downtime to prepare for uptime. And that's kind of a reference to the periods that are a little bit dry when you ain't got much happening. And how to make the best use of that time instead of focusing on the fact that the phone isn't ringing. And the other one is productive procrastination. I thought for many years that one of us had coined the term productive procrastination, but that's not true. It's been around for quite some time. What I mean by productive procrastination is this. It's when you're kind of doing everything but that one thing that you really need to do and can't put off any longer, yet you are. If you're in school, it would be getting started on writing your essay or studying for an exam. Maybe you're doing the dishes or cleaning your room up or making a list of things to do, filing away your paperwork, whatever it is. Productive procrastination, though, is when you are doing a lot of things except for the thing that you really feel like you should be doing. I think for me, the point is by using that term, I shifted away from feeling guilty all the time or self flagulating unnecessarily. So it's one thing to be lazy and do nothing, and it's quite another to use your energy to do something that may not be the thing, but that is still productive. I want to differentiate between what I spoke about in another episode from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. There he talks about the difference between being in action and being in motion. That's very different. That is about you set a goal that you want to work out, and instead of getting yourself to the gym, you're researching gyms and interviewing trainers and doing everything but actually getting started on your goal. That's being in motion versus being in action. Another example of that would be if you're a writer, spending an inordinate amount of time thinking about setting yourself up to write or planning the outline versus actually doing what Eric would call the worky work of writing. Productive procrastination is very different. So here are a couple of quotes about it. Productive procrastination is a process that some people use to help them manage their thoughts and emotions towards completing their pending tasks. Some people tend to view procrastination in a negative light, but when done properly, procrastination can actually be a healthy way of dealing with your to-do list. Amen to that. Let's talk about the etymology. Etymologically, procrastination is derived from the Latin verb procrastinare, to put off until tomorrow. But it's more than just voluntarily delaying. Procrastination is also derived from the ancient Greek word akrasia, doing something against our better judgment. This is all reminding me of when I left Scout Talent and I was in the early days of finding my footing and figuring out what I wanted to do with this time and opportunity I had created for myself. And I was conducting my life with an outdated operating system. So I would get motivated and make my list of things to do. And then week after week, I would find myself not 
getting things done on my list. And I felt absolutely terrible. I was really like feeling ashamed. And then I got curious about it. And I started realizing that my list was full of things to do that actually weren't important to me. I had to eventually face the fact that my interests and priorities were shifting and that my old operating system was being rewired entirely. And then it was interesting. I started noticing that I was getting a lot of things done and it wasn't necessarily the things that I had written on my list. And it was a process, but eventually I stopped writing these exhaustive lists and my lists became more what was really important to me, things I didn't want to forget. And I let go a lot of the shoulds. That's the point. My to-do list had become a list of shoulds versus the want to and get to things. What do I want to do? What do I get to do? What do I want to remember versus what mustn't I forget? It's a different energy. And I'd just like to end by saying productive procrastination can be an incredibly great way to get things done on your list. And I think there are a lot of clues in there about where your energy goes and where your attention goes and what you actually really feel like doing. Anyway, I think the point is sometimes we just need to give ourselves a break, right? Like just do the thing that you feel like doing and take a good hard look at those to-do lists. I don't know who needs to hear that. That's all for now. Until next time, from my heart to yours. 